yeah, 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 yeah. There, I got nothing. Come on! Oh, right. Guys, it's been a good week. It's it's been a very good week, and that is because Storm Callum finally allowed us to leave the fish docks of Grimsby. Um, made some pretty good progress down the Lincolnshire coast, and then managed to get through the wash. Um, the wash was always a little bit of a concern for me and Matt. You know, one of the things about this stretch is that although on the big picture it sort of looks as though you're nearly home, or if you go, yay, we're nearly in Norfolk, it's fantastic. If it looks like the home straight, but actually this bump of coast here. It's actually really dangerous because uh, from Skegness basically all the way to Yarmouth, you've got about 50 miles there or more, 60 miles where if you get a strong northerly, there's nowhere to go. Um, you know, if you go and hide up in the wash, then you've got to go right up one of these rivers, which is miles up. It's partly about what is comfortable for you, but it's partly about what's possible for the boat. There's just nowhere for shelter. So the next available shelter really on this stretch is all the way around at Great Yarmouth. There was always the worry that we'd just be pulled in which would just add this huge unnecessary dog leg to the entire east coast um, it didn't happen uh, we found a cheeky little weather window through the dead of night where we were able to go from skegness right the way across which is why it feels so good to say that i'm speaking to you from the north coast of norfolk um, for many reasons norfolk is really nice it's stunning and i know i say that about a lot of places all around great britain but um, the queen has a house here in norfolk so it's not just me that thinks that Norfolk's nice, um, the Queen does as well. I'm going to be completely honest, um, after swimming through the, the poo pipe of Great Britain, that is the Humber, anywhere is probably going to feel quite nice to swim, just because it doesn't feel or taste like I'm swimming in the toilet anymore. So North Norfolk, I'm just happy to be here. So that's an update of play, I need to go get my wetsuit on and make some cold, hard Norfolk miles. <laughs> Guys, uh, need to do a Q&A this week, but uh, a little bit rushed for time. We've got to get to Great Yarmouth, which is 10 miles away. 11, where did the other mile come from? That's added an extra mile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swim. I'm going to do a Q&A during the banana breaks. See you in a bit. question I think is from Mark Ponza who says um, am I gonna keep the beard when I get to Margate uh, I'm quite fond of it uh, Hester my girlfriend isn't and she keeps threatening to shave me when I'm sleeping so I want to keep it I might be shaved against my will next question is from Mark Bartram who says can I still drink water or does it taste weird with my salt tongue um, water is actually okay um, but I find myself eating a lot more yogurt because it's kind of soothing on my tongue, but it's not that bad anymore, look. Ah. Next question is from Joe Haraki, who says, do I ever get bored of swimming every single day? Uh, Joe, not gonna lie, I've not enjoyed every single moment of the Great British Swim. Uh, there are times when swimming with minke whales and, and seals that, that are circling me right now, actually, then it is amazing and it's a real privilege, but other times it's less about enjoyment and more just about discipline. Just got out of the shower, just got warm, now time to refuel. Um, but final question, I get loads of questions on this, and it's, it's kind of the same question, which is, what's happening to my body? Um, how are we kind of holding it together? Now we're approaching the final stages of the swim. Um, what's gonna happen after to my body when I'm used to swimming for up to 12 hours a day? Um, and what can I expect with life back on land? Um, the reality is, is because no one's ever done this before, I don't actually know the answer. Um, I've got theories, um, but having said that, the physio genius that is Jeff is due to visit me a little bit later just to see 
what might, in theory, happen to my body after this one. <laughs> I'm not using my legs at all, like at all. And even walking down the, the steps to go to my cabin, like my, my calves, my Achilles would just be like, wow, like what is going on there? I mean, people say it's like land legs, right? Yeah. So you've got your sea legs, but I'm going to need to get my land legs back. What's happening to me, Jeff? So you've undoubtedly lost some muscle mass, some muscle strength. You've inevitably lost a little bit of bone density as well. When you get back onto land and you start trying to put force through them, that's when they don't cope with that stress that's placed upon them. So you're going to need to put some strength back into your feet. We need to get them working again, wake them up, get them off the sun lounger. Let's do some work. I can pull, that's but not like, you know, from the... Yeah, 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 there, I've got nothing. All these little muscles are trying to work. <laughs> Look at they're, that. All, they're all flickering, trying to work. You can actually it's see amazing. them. Like, they've just got nothing. Come on! Because you've lost some of that proprioception, too. Yeah. Doing it. Yeah. Nope, I went for it. Guys, I'm not even gonna lie, that, that was a pretty brutal week. We managed to clock up just over 40 miles in two days and we managed to just make it in, into Great Yarmouth uh, just before uh, northerly winds uh, come crashing into the North Norfolk coast. So we're safe and, and we can kind of hide here until we look at, at the Thames estuary, uh, which feels good. Feels really good. I know my shoulders are happy, but now uh, because of bad weather, I think I might get a tide off which is, which is a luxury right now. It's a luxury on the Great British Swim. It means I get a lie-in tomorrow, which is gonna be amazing. But I think the best thing about this week is now that we are approaching the end, I, I still don't wanna get complacent. I really, really don't. But it's nice now that we can start to look back and, and get a little bit nostalgic on, on the whole Great British Swim. And way back, it always resonated with me. Um, one of the Royal Marines said to me, he said, Ross, athletes train to be their best and we're trained to perform at our worst. I can honestly say there's not been a single day where I've woke up and felt pretty good. You know, I've always had sea ulcers, uh, shoulders have been sore, lactic acid, chafing, salt tongue. There's always been something. And actually, on that note, my ocean-based musings of last week actually got quite a lot of love, which is why I wanted to end this week's episode with, with another musing. It's your body that determines your potential, but it's your mind that determines whether you use it. And what I mean by that is, going back to Loughborough University, it was my training there that determined my lung capacity, lactic threshold, biomechanics when swimming. But what I found over the Great British Swim is tide after tide, morning after morning, jellyfish after jellyfish sting, it's my mind that has determined whether I've used it. So guys, that's it for this week. Um, fingers crossed, touch wood, I speak to you next week, a little bit closer to Margate, a little bit closer to home. 
As always, don't forget you can follow my progress on the Red Bull Tracker, which is redbull.co.uk slash the Great British Swim. Until next week, I need to get some sleep.